Hello everyone, Vicki Verley here, Rock and Roll Prophetess. Today we're going to take a look at the full moon in Virgo, which is happening on February 24th, 2024 Eastern Time, but times will vary depending on your location. Uh, before we get started, I am Vicki Verley, and you can find me at VickiVerley.com. Do not be fooled by imposters. I will never instant message you to, for readings on any of the social media platforms. You can go to my website or, or through my official email, which is on my website. Uh, I offer different uh, spiritual and psychic and astrology readings. Uh, sometimes I have special readings, which I have right now is the Aries Ingress reading. This is an astrology-based psychic reading. I don't offer those very often. It's about the upcoming Aries Ingress. We'll look at that. We'll look at many things that are going on at that time, including this Chiron North Node thing, including the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, including both of the eclipses that are happening around there. So it's packed full of all kinds of astrological things. So if you wanted to order that, that's going to be available for a limited time. If you enjoy my content, I would love it if you hit the subscribe and like buttons on YouTube so that other people could find this information as well. All right, so here it is. This is the new or full moon, I should say, in Virgo, happening again on the 24th. Now, these come around, the full moon comes around every year. You know, every year you get one new moon and one full moon. But in general, the Virgo energy is like the details. You know, you could be, we could be coming aware of some detail or some minute thing that maybe we missed the first time around. Uh, something could be a, a, an important detail, small but mighty, a small but important detail, my guides are saying, could be coming through at this time for everybody. Now we look over here, it's opposing, it always opposes the sun, hence that makes it the full moon when the sun opposes the uh, thing. And it's exact conjunction with the sun, as always, at five degrees of Pisces, but this whole, we've got a little stellium going on here. We've got Mercury, Sun and Saturn all together. So this is intense and very powerful. And this full moon is the opposite end of it. Again, I'm getting a strong inclination about secrets being revealed. Some kind of secret coming out. Some kind of information that you really needed to know that's key to a lot of things is going to be coming to you. Some of you, it could be psychic and spiritual information that comes through your own conscious about like your own life's plan or, you know, um, spiritual awakening kind of things. You know, it could get, because this is all this Neptune energy, okay? This is all the realm of the, the uh, subconscious mind, the psychic energy, these types of things. And then when it, the moon here is like pulling that out of there, because it's, it's coming in with the Virgo energy, which is very analytic. And not only that, Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, and Mercury is the mind too. So it's like where the mind and the spirit meet. The guides are saying where the mind and the spirit meet is where the magic happens. I like that. So this is super powerful. Um, anytime Saturn's involved, which it is, Saturn is the lord of the karma, there are karmic implications, but also Saturn are long-standing things. So it could be either that we're looking at long-standing things that have already been around for a long time and sometimes associated with the patriarchy, with the Saturn energy, because it's the father. Uh, all, but otherwise, it could also be things that are being established now because we have so much movement now. So many things. Pluto's moved into here. Saturn's in the, still in the low degrees of that. Neptune's getting ready to make a shift. So we're at these transitional points. But with the Saturn involvement, it gives it good structure. I always say, you know, Saturn, Saturn rule, rules the bones in your body. So we, without the bones in our body, we'd be a lump of flesh on the floor. We need foundation. We need structure. We need an armature in which to build our life upon. You know, so these could be bringing that, all that kind of thing in, this strong foundational structure thing to Piscean things that are just, uh, the guide said, that are of whim and fancy. Okay, whim and fancy. There's a band name. i got to write that one down. <laughs> band name, whim and fancy. I like it, though. Whim and fancy. Or a gay bar. Huh? Whim and fancy. Anyways. <laughs> Band name, gay bar, hmm. Either or. <laughs> Back to the reading. Yeah, so there is this, you know, the fantasy of the Piscean energy, the subconscious mind, the collective unconscious, the, you know, all these things uh, that are swimming around in the not in the material world. And then the Saturn wants to bring it down, give it roots to grow in the ground, to plant. In the northern hemisphere, you know, we're going to be moving into spring, which is that Aries ingress that I was talking about earlier. 
you know, within a month, we're getting into that spring time frame. So it's very powerful in that way. And working out the final details with this, um, with this Virgo energy. The other thing is, it's on, baby. It's actually passed. I think it's a day or two before. I, I'm not sure, that, but we're in it now. As, even when, as I'm recording this video um, in, in the th on the 15th or 14th or 15th of February, we've got the Chiron. We've been talking about it. We've been dancing around it. We've been, it's been happening this closer and closer. It's on. I mean, it's passed, but 16, 16 here. Chiron conjunct the North Node. We are in this time of healing. By healing ourselves in the Aries energy, because the Aries energy is always me, myself, and I, by going within and not pointing the finger outward to the, you know, the partnership, the Libra, the South Node, the past, talking about the past, they're showing me that thing when you... Um, when you point the finger at somebody, if three fingers are, or four it would be, four fingers are pointing back at you. No, it's three. That's correct. Three fingers are pointing back at you. You know, it's calling it back onto yourself. Dealing with our own crap so that all of us dealing with our own crap. That's part of, I think, since the note has been, even Chiron's been in Aries more, it's been this self-love, self-care movement. And it is so important. But it's always, again, we've got to draw the line. We still have to be considerate of others. We still have to be, you know, but taking care of ourselves first. And then if we're, just like in, you know, our one-to-one -one relationships with our first and seventh house, you know, if we take care of ourselves and we're a better partner or we attract a better partner, or, you know, we, we can get closer to living our best life or living our best relationship. Um, but as a collective, it's beyond just that. It's, it's the collective, especially with all this stuff. I'm going to get into that in a minute, all this Aquarian stuff. And this, too, with the Iranian energy being involved. But it's each individual doing better than the collective does better. You know, all, all ships rise in the high tide, you know, or whatever the hell that goes. But that's what, the way they're showing me. You know, we have to, there's always, we got to pull people along. And it's not by fighting with people that don't see, you know, the path, and maybe it's not the path for them, but I mean, some some of the absurdities that are flying around these days are just un unreal, you know. So, but it's not about calling them out and saying you're stupid. Can't you see why are you so why are you so dumb to believe this stuff? Blah blah. Pointing that finger and bitching and being cruel, being warlike, because Aries is the Mars, being warlike. Aries is also the trailblazer. We got to go for that high. You know, when they get that high, not to that low energy, not being the warlike monger, but going high. And as we go high, you know, so comes the rest. It comes along. The energetic frequency goes high. And as a collective and as a group, we all go up. We all go higher. I want to, I want to take you higher. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba. And I can't delete the layer. There it goes. <laughs> yeah, I want to take you higher. But you got to do it for yourself. You got to blaze that trail for yourself, and then others may may or may not see. Even if they don't see, like, wow, so and so is doing really good now. Maybe what are they? What are they up to? What have they been doing? Uh, or you know, maybe they were right about that. You know, look at how things are working out for them. Or and it, and it's like that too. Your your own environment. You know, are you happy? Are you are you thriving? Are you happy? That's the order of business right now. Aries, self-care, healing those wounds, uh, healing our own wounds, acknowledging our part in it, you know, acknowledging that our part in it, because every time there's a disagreement, you know, no matter how absurd things get, you know, you had a part to play in it. There's never, you know, one person is all, does all the wrong. There's always you had a part to play in it. Even if that part to play was that you let it go on for too long, or you let them drain your energy, or you let them, you know, whatever, bleed you dry, you know, emotionally, whatever, however way, financially, whatever it might be. That's, they're not the bad guy. You have to be accountable for that, that you let that happen. Because you can always say, you can always choose a new path, and that's the Aries energy. Okay, yeah, so we've got this intense, not in, well, kind of intense because of Pluto. I guess that's why I said that, but there, it's really not conjunct. It's pretty far off, but the Venus and Mars are right in there. Look at that, 8 and 9 degrees are in a nice tight orb. So definitely love stuff. So I'm feeling like some people, I and mean, here comes some more music. If you've never heard, watch my videos before my guides start sending me songs and uh, you know, so I might, I may break into song here and there. Uh, I'm hearing the people say I'm the light 
of the party cause I tell it you go to mm. Ah, what is that? I can't get to it. It's Smokey Robinson. Take a good look at my place and my face. My smile seems out of place. You look closer. It's easy to trace the tracks of my tears. Ooh. Wow, I got chills all down my legs when I said that. It's easy to trace the tracks of my tears. That goes with the Chiron stuff, too. Where It wasn't that person that did this. Or it, was it that person or was it the person? Was it before that? Or are you just you know overly triggered and overly sensitive about certain things? Maybe you are a little. Where is that coming from? It's coming from somewhere in you. It's not because the person did whatever over here, asked for whatever. There's some deeper stuff going on. And there's where we come into the deep end of the, the pool over here with this Pisces energy, too. But the Venus-Mars thing, I was on that. I don't know how I got all pulled back into that other thing again. <laughs> you know, love. Love is there. Aquarius. Aquarius wants to try things a different way. Aquarius wants to do new things. Aquarius wants to be in consideration for the whole group or the, be the betterment of the, the collective or the group. So these kinds of things could come along. But what I was getting, and that was what I was getting, there could be somebody that you would never think you would be attracted to or that would be attracted to you because there's that uh, Iranian energy. Whenever you get the Aquarius, there's, it's Uranus comes into play because Aquarius and Uranus are almost one and the same, you might as well say. So, you know, there's that Uranian thing that comes in and it's just like, what? That person? You like me? What? Or I like, wow, they look kind of, what? I'm attracted to them? I never realized that. Or, you know, um, something, it could be like that too. That's where I was going with this. With this swimming around in the Piscean energy, it's kind of like, maybe it was all, always there, but you just never saw it. Or maybe they were always there and you just never saw it. By the same token, sometimes with a lot of Pisces energy and Neptune energy, you can do that, um, it can be that, um, the, the rose-colored glasses. So maybe you're, you're seeing something and all of a sudden they, 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 they Virgo like, ooh, <laughs> that Virgo, ooh, germs, or ooh, there's a hair, or ooh, they, you know, some, it's something that, you know, that just all of a sudden, ew, you, 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 you know, shatters your illusion over here of them, uh, you know, whatever, take some, somebody off their pedestal. Uh, but then you just kind of have to approach in a different way, maybe in a more realistic way, because everybody, you know, the guys want me to say everybody poops. Okay, I don't know why. They want me. I've been, they've been saying that this whole time in my ear, and I'm just like, yeah, okay. I, I was not going to say it, but everybody poops. Okay, so there I said it. Are you happy now? <laughs> Uh, but anyways, let's go over here and look at the Jupiter-Uranus uh, conjunction, which is moving in, which is happening on 420. But it's it's in it's coming in close here. It's getting in orb. And this is powerful because it's captured in this new moon, and it's also sextiling with the Saturn stuff over here. Well, the Saturn sextiling the Jupiter pretty tight there. Um, you know, we could be getting like a little bit of a preview of what actually that that Jupiter Uranus exact conjunction is going to look like for us. How is it going to affect us in our life? It could be showing us that way. And uns again, with this unsus you know surprising thing, or you know, Venus and Mars is usually together. It's going to be romantic love stuff, you know, pretty much. Uh, but maybe it's some other thing, you know. Um, maybe it's just something that you're pa you're in love with, your passionate project or something. And, uh, or maybe, you know, even with the 11th house, maybe it's some kind of group thing or something. And it's been like, you know, oh, you should do this. You should, oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. And it's like, eh, eh, it's, I'm not into it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then so you finally cave and you go. And it's just like, hey, this is really cool. This is really fun. I never thought I, I'm taking a pickleball for somebody out there. <laughs> Somebody's like, pickleball is lame. And then you go play and go, hey, this is not, this is kind of fun. I actually do like it or whatever. It's, it's something, whatever it is, it might not be pickleball. It's not going to be for everybody, of course. But, um, you know, it's something that you do think is kind of lame or it's just like, that's so lame. I would never do that. But, you know, things change. Things are changing. <laughs> the only constant is change and that's we're in this time of change for sure the Virgo energy also can kind of bring it in and let us kind of focus in and kind of see you know um, where where are we in this whole thing if things are moving so quickly with all this all the planets are direct and Pluto's in Uranus, Pluto's in Aquarius and whew, things are vibing really high and 
you know, we're on this high, this high vibe and that kind of energy. And the Virgo full moon can be a time of just, hey, let me just sit down and uh, see where I'm at here. Let's figure things out for a minute. Let's, you know, let's go through and, and, and get things in order. Let me let me get uh, even if it's just getting it order in order in your own mind. Like where where am I? You're like because things are just kind of flying through, and there's such a heavy Neptunian energy. It can be sort of loose and uh, swimming in the, you know, whatever, swimming in the consciousness or just being in flow and not even. That's another thing that could this could be. You know, this could be where you're really in flow in work or something. Especially if you're doing something creative, which I know a lot of creatives watch my channel here you know you can get so immersed in your 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 art or so immersed in your work and your art and everything that you just you know you got to come, come up for air they're saying <laughs> well when they said that i went right back to the venus and mars maybe you're just so you know you're having a love in and you just haven't been out of the bed for you know a week or something and um just whatever it is you got to come up for air you got to come up from air you got to really get practical for you for a minute at least, kind of see where, what's going on, see where we're going. Where's all this Aries energy trying to take us? Where's all this, you know, Jupiter Uranus energy trying to take us? What's all this Piscean stuff trying to speak to us? Let's get it all, because it's a lot. It can be overwhelming. It can be a really a lot. And then with that Virgo, it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. This is, I can see where I need to be, do this healing. I can see where... Maybe I was at fault. I, I can see how I can do better. Especially when we're dealing with these old stuff. You know, it's like that the great Maya Angelou quote that I love is, when you know better, you do better, you know. So you could do better. It, you, it's not always going to be about this, that, or even circumstances or stuff like that. You know, sometimes it's circumstances. Usually what I'm, you know, the circumstances, I'm trying to really surrender a lot to the circumstances because... <laughs> I mean, well, ultimately, what's, I mean, I guess you do have a choice, you know, with through visualization and manifesting your reality and all that, but a lot of times these circumstances are just things that you have to, you know, it's something that has to be healed, it's something, it's some kind of karmic lesson that you have to learn, and the karmic lessons are coming fast and furious here, too, at this time with that, and plus the sun creeping up on the on the Saturn and everything, and, and the Mercury will be too, and then Saturn's going to catch. You know, we 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 Saturn is going deep with us. Saturn's always kind of deep, but Saturn's really swimming in that real deep end of the pool there, and really trying to show us these deep things that need to be explored and need to be purged and need to be cleansed and purged and twelfth house rid of, be gone, be gone. What do they say? They're saying, be gone, be gone, dank spirits. Be gone, dank spirits. <laughs> All right, let's just check a real quick here in the Aspectarian grid and see if there's any big ones that I forgot. Well, yeah, the Jupiter's working with the Saturn in a nice sextile. I think we did talk about that, yeah. And then the Jupiter's squaring the Venus and Mars. I did not talk about that. Yeah, you could go overboard with this, too. This Venus and Mars, you know... Um, the, the, this is a good check-in. This is a good check-in spot over here with the moon. It's like check-in. Am I going overboard? Am I so passionate about all this that I'm just letting it take over my life? Is my life changing with the Iranian stuff and I don't even know it, you know? Am I, um, am I giving it all away and not honoring this self-care thing? Am I, you know, a lot of times you, it's, and I, it's sad to say, but it, not maybe not sad to say, but women tend to do it a little more sometimes. You know, you get with this guy or you get in a new relationship, not maybe not a guy, whoever, and, uh, you know, that's all. It's, you know, dump all their friends, they're never around anymore, and it's just all about giving all their energy away to this new relationship. But the airy stuff, you know, I know you love your new relationship, you love your new thing, but you've got to bring it back home here. Don't lose yourself in it. You could lose yourself. And maybe not even a relationship. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. You lose yourself in a project. And again, sometimes it could be like if you're doing something creative and you're just in that flow and the time, you know, time, you don't even realize you're out of time. That's what happens when that time flies and you're having fun. Time flies when you're immersed in your soul mission and you're immersed in your truth calling. Um, so, you know, you got to come out and check in and check in on yourself. And sometimes you can make a lot of progress. You know, you can just be wow, 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 and 
bam, you know, I can't believe I got all that done. Oh, it's, I can't believe it's midnight already, and we've been, I've been working on this for five hours or whatever, you know. Um, but also, you know, sometimes if, if it's, you know, if it's ultimately coming back to you and feeding you, like the, the last scenario, if you're, you're immersed in your creative projects or whatever, yeah, cool. But if it's like, oh, I'm not getting, you know, my dog's locked in the house all the time because I'm always over at the boyfriend or whoever's house and, you know, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, you know, and it's all about this relationship, you got to pull it, don't allow yourself to get so submerged in it. Don't give all of yourself away. Save a little bit for yourself. Nurture yourself. Love yourself. Um, and don't, uh, you know... There is that melding period, you know, when it, that honeymoon period, I guess, you know, when you're first falling in love and you always do want to be around each other constantly. But, you know, you still got to take care of business, you know, you still got to, and there's other people, for, that, what I'm hearing, what they're saying is there's other people in your life that are depending on you. And I mean, some of you might be saying, well, that's not true, you know, I don't have any pets or kids or anything or whatever but maybe it's just you know your work is suffering or you know your job you're not doing as good as good at your job or then your people that pay your salary they're depending on you too right so that's the thing that's going to be uh you know something to keep in mind something to keep an eye on um but also i feel like another thing about this because everything has been going so so fast lately this could be a good time to kind of just um check in and see how far you've come because sometimes when you're immersed in it whatever it is like the work or whatever it's just like you're just doing it doing and doing it and you don't even realize and then like maybe take a step back let's see well where was i at like last year at this time or whenever you know you could use any time frame that you want when like uh six months ago or last year or even last month and you may be fine you may be surprised to find there's surprise elements all over that you've, you've really accomplished quite a bit that quite a bit has changed. Maybe it's just happened so slowly and so subtly that it hasn't been right in your face. But you, maybe you're you you know you're just a different person than you even were at that time. I I see that a lot in myself. You know, um, there wasn't any big break t thing, but I just see that I'm slowly, you know, I don't know. I'm more and more becoming. That's what the guys just said. And what are, be, what are we becoming? Well, that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. That's going to be what you're becoming. Are you becoming more and more of your true soul's calling? Are you aligning with that? Yeah, there's manifestation, and you can manifest all kinds of stuff, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's your soul's calling, you know? It, it, and that's another thing, too. Check in with yourself. Is it your soul's calling, or is it something that you're coveting that your neighbor sees? Or, you know, you see this on social media. Somebody will post a certain kind of picture or a certain kind of video and, and then everybody... So then you got to try to make one just like it. Or, or you, you know, coveting somebody else's... Maybe that, that thing is just not your path. Or maybe they were very successful through this kind of business. Or it worked for them. Why can't it work for me? Well, because maybe it's not your thing. You know, you hear stories all the time about people that get... You know, they get to the top of the mountain there... And they've done everything they want, and they look around, and it's just like they have this empty feeling, like, now what? And it's more, there's more to life than just, you know, having the, the most of whatever, being the top of the heap, you know? We all come with a soul's journey. And that's, speaking of soul's journey, that's another reading that I do offer that is astrology based. It's a psychic astrology reading where I dive in and we look at that. But, for, you know, just on a basic level, your north node is your true soul's calling for the most part. I mean, you can just, or you could look at your 10th house, you know, your mid heaven, but mostly I go by that north node no matter where it's at in the chart. So even if, um, and this is a little something that I always tell people when I do their soul reading, because I'm picking up a lot of past lives when I do the soul reading. Mostly it's past life stuff. And lately it's been a lot of galactic stuff lately that's been coming through. Um, but um, I always tell people, whatever your north node, so say you have a north node in Aries, all right? Then you look up Aries' sun sign only because the sun sign uh, writing or explanations gives you the most um, personality traits. And then you look at that and you say, well, here's the positive personality traits of the Aries and here's the negative or whatever sign your node is in. I'm just using Aries as an example. And you say, okay, 
these the things of the Aries um, North Node, the personality traits of Aries is what I'm supposed to be then. Trailblazer, da 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 da. And what you have to guard against might be, you know, being so self-important, you know, or having a, a bad bad temper sometimes, or being a little gruff, you know, whatever. You take the positive and the negative, and you're going towards the positive in a real general way. Now, when I do the soul reading, I go deep. You know, I look at the past lives and I say, oh, they show me. And it's just like, oh, so in this life you did this, so now you're striving to do this, you know. And it, I usually pick up at least maybe four or five past lives during the soul reading, you know. Mostly I find that they show me the ones. So if I don't touch on the one that you think was your favorite or you always felt like you had a past life in this society or whatever, you probably did, but maybe it's not as important to as to what you're working on now. I think that's what they, after doing many, many hundreds of these readings, I feel like that's what they they tend to show me. They tend to show me what you're working on now and how why you're working on it now. What what other energy you're counterbalancing or continuing with sometimes. And it's not always tit for tat. It's a, a lot of times it's just a continuation of something that you're building and working, doing more and more. So it's different for everybody. It's really fun and interesting. It's my favorite kind of reading to do. Uh, but again, I have other readings. I have tarot readings. And I am offering that Aries Ingress reading for a short time. So if you're interested in any of those, only through my website. Don't go through any social media DM stuff because it's lies for me or anybody else, okay? If you like this video, please do hit that like and subscribe. It always does help me uh, on the YouTube algorithm, which I could... To always appreciate and use. I do do uh, weekly readings through Patreon where it's a little bit of astrology and a couple cards for each sign. You can find an example of that on my recent videos. Other than that, I want to wish everybody the best possible full moon in Virgo. Lots going on. The Jupiter Uranus, the Chiron North Node, the Venus Mars, you know, a lot of things are happening all at once. So it's going to be hitting everybody some way, one way or another, okay? Have a great one. Remember your love and beauty incarnate, and we'll talk again soon.